In a drawing, signs advertise bars and cheap rooms. My name is Sergeant Joe Fink, working the 24-hour shift out of Homicide. And this is my workshop, the part of town that everybody knows about but that nobody wants to see. Where the tragedies are deeper, the ecstasy's wilder, and the crime rate consistently higher than anywhere else. Skid Row, my beat. Adult film theaters and pawn shops line the street. The Little Shop of Horrors. Presented in black and white. Starring Jonathan Hayes, Jackie Joseph, and Mel Wells. With Dick Miller, Myrtle Vale, Tammy Windsor, Toby Michaels, Leola Wendorf, Lynn Story. And Wally Campo, Jack Warford, Mary Wells, John Shaner, Jack Nicholson, and Dodie Drake. Screenplay by Charles B. Griffith. Photographer, Archie Dalzell. Film editor, Marshall Nealon Jr. Assistant director, Richard Dixon. Art director, Daniel Holler. Sound recordist, Philip Mitchell. Property master, Carl Brainyard. Makeup, Harry Thomas. Rider Sound Services. Music by Fred Katz. Produced and directed by Roger Corman. The most terrifying period in the history of my beat began in a little rundown floor shop called Mushniks. Live action. A woman with a black scarf over her hair is met by a bearded florist. Ah, good morning, Mrs. Shiva. How's things today? Oh, the same as usual, Mr. Mushnik. My sister's nephew, Stanley, died in Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, what happened? He got blown up. Who knows how? That's nice. Well, you would like, maybe as usual, some flowers for the funeral. They look to a back room. And never brought to my... I thought possibly, uh, because I always give to you all my funeral business, uh, maybe you should possibly give to me, uh... A little cut rate. Look on me, Mrs. Shiver. What am I, a philatelist? I sell on Skid Row nothing but cheap carnations. And I should give you a cut rate. I can't even afford water for the flowers. To my throat, I would be giving a cut. I dreamt I dwelt in... Mushnick scowls. With Get up from the back! Excuse me, Mrs. Shiver, that Seymour is... He's a nice boy. Why don't you let him see? What, see? Look, here I got a new customer, brand new in the yellow vest. I should let the cleanup boy, what I can't even afford, chase him out right away. The shop girl smiles and turns to the customer. Flower as fresh as the springtime, Mushniks, hello. Oh, hello, Dr. Farr. The dentist is with the patient. Listen, Mushnik, I haven't got much time. Send me over two gladiolas and the fern. Excellent. That's two dozen glads, one potted fern. No, 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 Mushnik. Two gladiolas and one fern. He drills the patient's tooth. Ah! You want I should put two gladiolas in the pot with the ferns? No, one fern, one piece altogether, three pieces. I need it for my waiting room. Yeah, uh, thank you. What? A uh, filling for out. Good, I'll drill a bigger hole. You mean you want two crummy gladiolas and one crummy fern? What kind of a decoration is that? Listen, it's my flower budget for the week. Mushnik. Who can be a dentist on Skid Row? All right, excellent. I'll send Seymour right away. Who am I to argue with science? Mm. Make it snappy. Now you are going to get it. Oh, you are going to get it. Look. Farb drills gleefully. Ah! At Mushnik's. Seymour Trailboin? Now, Mrs. Shiva, we were talking from the funeral flowers. But the little... Seymour runs in, stepping in a bucket. You call me Mr. Mushnick? No. I was calling John D. Rockefeller for to make a loan on my Rolls Royce. Sorry I said it. Now look, Seymour. You take two gladiolas. You'll cut them nice and even. You'll take one foin. You'll wrap them in a package. And you'll take them to Dr. Farr. Right? Seymour's brow furrows. Well, go already! He scurries away. Now what can I do for you, sir? Uh, my name is Burson Fudge. Excellent. I am Gravis Mushnick. Oh, that's a good one. Now, who's going to get my roses? I'll take care of you, Mrs. Shiver. Come right over here. You would like maybe some orchids for a nice girl? No, I think I'd like a couple of dozen carnations. Um, carnations. A person can't turn around these days that somebody shouldn't drop this. You've had more than your share of bad luck, Mrs. Seymour Shiver. cuts one flower stalk too short. You should have so many people kick off. He trims the other. On top of you too. 
about the carnation. Now it's too short. Mushnik stares as Seymour keeps cutting, trying to even the stems. Seymour pulls out a tape measure. My carnations. Mushnik stammers, then returns to Fouch with flowers. You should see what that Seymour is. Oh, here are your carnations. Wait, I'll wrap them for you. Oh, that's you. all right. I'll eat them here. Mushnik stops. He turns around, eyeing Fouch, then smiles uncertainly. Why not? Fouch bites off a blossom. Of course, what else? The shop girl gapes. They are all right? Well, I've had better. Well, this is a small shop. Oh, that's OK. You know, those big places, they're full of pretty flowers, expensive flowers. When you raise them for looks and smell, you're bound to lose some food value. I like to eat these little out-of-the-way places. <laughs> Mrs. Shiva slaps her cheek. Such a thing, eating flowers. Look, don't knock it until you try it, huh? He salts them. Look what happened. Seymour holds two stubby stems. This is what I was trying to tell you before. Look on him, everybody. Look at the quality of his work. I ask you, when I fire him, where is he going to get such another good job? You mean I'm fired? No, I'm electing you president from the United States. Yes, you are fired. Gravis, you can't do that. Who, who can? She mouths you. I didn't mean it. You didn't mean it. You never mean it. You didn't mean it the time you put up the bouquet with the get well card in the funeral parlor and sent the black lilies to the old lady in the hospital. You didn't mean it. But this time, I, Gravis Mushnik, mean it. He means it. But gee, Mr. Mushnick, don't I always try to do what's right? And I'm crazy about flowers. I like flowers almost as much as Audrey does. Excellent. You're fired. Why don't you give him a chance to resurrect himself? I'd give him a chance to quit. I ain't gonna quit. You're a brave boy. You're fired. But that ain't fair, Mr. Mushnick. You know what I'm doing? I'm working on a special surprise plant just for you. I'm growing a plant like you ain't never seen before. Excellent. I can't even sell the plants I got in my shop out, you. Now, wait a minute. He's got a new kind of plant you want to look at. I don't look on flowers, Mr. Yellow Vest. I got ancestors in the flower business for 200 years, but I got one shop on Skid Row, one stinking shop. I don't even like flowers. No, you don't understand what I mean. Look, I've eaten in flower shops all over the world, and I've noticed that the places that have the most weird and unusual plants do the best business. See? 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 What is this, a tango? All right. Explain me more. Well. I remember one place that had a whole wall covered with poison ivy. And people came from miles around to look at that wall, and they stayed to buy. The owner got rich. No. He scratched himself to death in an insane asylum. Oh, I'm... that was my cousin Harry. All right. Mushnick turns right. on Seymour. You go home, and you get this fancy schmancy plant, and you bring it back here. And if Mr. Yellow Vest Fouch says it's a draw, you still got a job. If he don't, out you go to Bodie, right? Don't worry, you'll like it. You'll see. Seymour trips over a chair, then stumbles out the door. Mushnik rubs his beard wearily. Seymour ambles down the street in his cap and scarf. He passes discount stores and lunch counters. He runs up the step of a peeling three-story house. He enters a dingy apartment. This is Radio KSIK. You've been listening to music for old invalids. Avoiding a bucket, he checks on a small plant in the kitchen. He trips on the bucket. Seymour, is that you? Yeah, Ma. Hey, here, look at my tongue. But Ma, I already seen your tongue. His mom lies in bed. Have you no sympathy for your poor mother? Laughing at her and mocking her realness, and she's got one foot in the grave? Oh, I didn't mean it. Oh, you never mean it. Oh, come on, look at my tongue. She sticks it out. A tongue's a tongue, Ma. They all look the same to me. Oh. Did you stop at Dr. Mallard's and get the results of my tests? Yeah, he said there's nothing wrong with you. Oh, no, Dr. Mallard. He, he's one doctor I thought would tell the truth. He said you should be playing fullback for the ram. He wants me dead. I'll bet he's assistant coroner. Well, I got a guy. And I know I've got my goiters coming back. I can feel it every morning after breakfast. Yeah, that's when you take those great... He backs into a radiator. What, you got a little surprise for me? Open it up and see. She pulls a glass bottle from a paper bag. <gasps> Dr. Slurp Saddle's famous tonic. Wait here. She dons glasses. To be taken internally or externally for pain and neuritis, neuralgia, headache. If hit by a truck, call your physician. Alcoholic contact, 98%. <laughs> Oh, Seymour, you never know what this is going to do for me. She takes a chug. 
then another, and a third. Oh, I can feel that surge of warm health going through me already. <clears throat> Look, Ma, I gotta get my plant and hurry back to the shop. You mean that lousy weed out in the kitchen? Yeah, and if Mr. Mushnick doesn't like it, he's gonna fire me. He picks up the egg-shaped plant. Apparently, my hearing is going out on me. I get the distinct impression that your job security depends on what Mushnick thinks of that thing. Gee, it looks worse than it did this morning when I went to work. I wish I knew what to do with it. Well, if you asked me, I'd pitch it out in the trash. I don't like my house cluttered up with rotten vegetables. Look, Ma, I gotta hurry. Can I bring you anything? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bring me the evening news. They're running a, a self-diagnosis contest. The winner gets to go to the Mayo Clinic. Half her bottle's done. Bye, Ma. Bye, son. I'll see you the rosy edge of dawn. Drink to me, oh, She dances in her hospital gown. Seymour returns to the shop, carrying the plant in a coffee tin. Mushnick's with Fouch. I put this on my bill. The shop girl Audrey arranges shelves as Seymour enters. Well, here it is, everybody. What do you think of it? Well, it sure is different. It looks delicious, but don't you think it's kind of stale? Well, it hasn't been feeling too well. You call that a fancy plant? It looks like it never spent an LT day in its entire life. I don't care. I like it anyway. You, you like even skunk cabbage. Yeah. What kind of a plant is this, Seymour? Well, I'm not sure. I got the seeds from a Japanese gardener over on Central Avenue. He found them in with an order he got from a plantation next to a cranberry farm. Fine, fine. You don't even know what is this plant you're growing. Well, well I gave it a name. What name? Oh, gee. What? You gave it a dirty name? You can't even mention it? Well, I named it Audrey Jr. <gasps> Poor kid. I don't think it's so much I should keep on spending $10 a week on your salary. But, Gravis, he named it after me. I know, and if they keep it, they'll name it Mushnick's Folly because I'll be in jail for non-payment of taxes. Are you crazy? Who, who? You, you. That's probably the only plant of its kind in the world. Don't you realize if Seymour can nurse that thing back to health, you'll have people coming here from all over? You think so, you found? I know so, you Mushnick. Now, that's all I'm saying on the subject. Besides, I've got to get home. My wife's making gardenias for dinner. Mushnick's brows rise. Good night, you Fouch. Good night. And I'll see you tomorrow. Crazy about kosher flowers. Fouch leaves. He's a nice man. Maybe he knows what he's talking about. Maybe he's not so stupid. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll keep you and this dumbbell junior for a week. If you can noise it back to LT, you both can stay. If you can't, you're both fired. Oh, gee, thank you, Mr. Mushnick. Audrey gazes tenderly at her namesake. Seymour slumps. Don't feel sad, Seymour. Don't waste your pity on me, Audrey. I'm not worth it. Who says you're not? Everybody. Yeah, I know. But I think you're a fine figurative of a man, and, and I know that Audrey Jr. will be the sweetest thing in the whole wide world. Well, I don't know. I've given it every kind of fancy fertilizer and atomic plant food and distilled mineral water you can buy, but it just gets sicker and sicker. Don't worry. You're going to be another Luther Glendale. Pasadena. Burbank. Good night, Seymour. Good night, Audrey. He waves, then sits regarding his plant. Its two oval leaves form a bulbous pod, surrounded by wilting leaves. What's the matter, little plant? Haven't I done everything I could for you? Where did I goof? You're the first little plant I ever tried to grow, and if you die, I don't know what I'll do. Please don't die. I'll get you some water, okay? He hurries to get a watering can. Looking out the front window, he sees the sun low on the horizon. He flicks on the lights, then returns with the watering can. The pod's leaves have parted, revealing downy fuzz inside. Oh, gee. You opened up just like you do every night at sunset. I wish I knew how to make you grow. Here, let me move this out of your way so you Pricking his thumb, he shakes it over Audrey Jr. The pod opens and closes like a mouth. Hey, what happened? How come you woke up? He eyes his wound. Blood? You like blood? The pod snaps open and shut. Oh, you must be kidding. Well, we'll see. Seymour removes a flower from his lapel. He straightens the safety pin and wipes it on his scarf. 
what I'm doing for you. Grimacing, he jabs his finger. Ow! He shakes it over the plant. The plant opens and closes rapidly. Oh, who would have thought it? Well, I guess there's just no accounting for people's tastes. Another day, signs on the shop read, look on the fantastic new plant Audrey Jr. and straight from the jungle in Africa. Seymour enters the shop. All of his fingers are bandaged. Look on him, Audrey. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he delicious? Isn't he got the two-dollar raise? What happened to your fingers? Bee stings. Uh, so how come I'm all of a sudden so wonderful? Five bees? One from each finger? Ten bees. Did you say I was getting a two-dollar raise? Correct, my very excellent Seymour. Ten bees. What did I do now? Don't you know what you did? Just look. Audrey Jr. is flourishing. Oh, boy, look at that. It grew. It's almost a foot long. Isn't it empirical? It grows like a cold sore from the lip. Teen girls enter. Oh, hello, young pretty ladies. What can Gravis Mushnik do for you? Well, we saw your sign outside. About the Audrey Jr. So we thought we'd come in and take a look. Well, give a look. That makes four people today who've come in just to look at it. Oh, did sure. Is that just too much? Oh, what kind of plant is it? It's an Audrey Jr. Where was it you got in trouble with 10 bees? Well, is that all? I mean, doesn't it have a scientific name? Yes, of course, but who could denounce it? You oh, would like maybe wow. to buy something. Well, we don't have any money. Except $2,000. But that's just to spend on flowers. So we don't have any of our own. Isn't that a drag? You got just $2,000 just for to spend on flowers? Mm -hmm. That's right. Who died? The Chamber of Commerce? Well, we're from Cucamonga High School. And we're building a float for the Rose Bowl Parade. Which is made out of flowers. Thousands of them. And we're on the committee that picks the florist. And then glues on the flowers. <sighs> oh. Gee, that sure is a mad plant. Wow, yeah. Seymour here invented it. He did! They hug him. Girls, 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 please don't oh. damage the horticulturist. Seymour squirms. Tell me, how come you don't buy all these thousands of flowers from Gravis Mushnik? My flowers got something the others don't. What's that? The cheek. Well, gee, if your shop is good enough to develop the Audrey Jr., I guess it can get us everything we need. Yeah, we'll talk it over with the rest of the committee. Excellent. Well, we gotta run now. Bye, all. Bye, Seymour. Bye. Bye, Bye girls. Mushnik beams at Seymour. A son. A son. Look, Audrey. I got a son. Oh, gee, Mr. Mushnik. What, Mr. Mushnik? I don't want you should call me Mr. Mushnik anymore. I want you should call me Dad. Okay, Dad. Isn't that beautiful? Seymour Krellboyn, come over here, my son. I want to talk on you about the future. Look on this fly trap. He gestures Look, to the store. Soon we got no more skid row. We will be rich, us. I am building for you a giant greenhouse in which you are making impossible flowers, which in turn I am selling at ridiculous prices in my giant new flower saloon in Beverly Hills. Do you see that big sign in the sky? It is saying Gravis Mushnik in French. Isn't it exciting? And we'll have an orchestra right by the cash register. And Gravis will wave his arms. And the orchestra will play Mendelssohn's spring song. And I'll come out in a gown wrapped by somebody expensive and say... The carnations are $600 a dozen, two dozen for a thousand. It's a bargain. Get them while they last. Stop shouting. Mrs. Shiva enters. My uncle Marsha's brother Yanko just passed away. Trying to fly New Jersey. Tell me. How much are the carnations today? The carnations are 600... Mushnik muffles him. Why are they letting him run around loose? Please, please excuse my son, Mrs. Shiva. Just point anything in the store and it is yours. <laughs> That's right. The cash register, maybe, huh? Ah, wait a minute. Here. Here are several dozen carnations on the house courtesy of Gravis Mushnik the Bloom Tycoon. That's my dad. Thanks. Thanks very much. Only tell me, why are you so happy? Not only did my uncle Moshe's brother Yankel die, Tennessee, New Jersey. You should also give some flowers to that poor dead plant there. Good morning, Mr. Mushnik. Audrey Jr. is wilted and listing. Good morning, Mrs. Shiver. 
Look what happened to my plant, Dad. Who are you calling Dad? Who, who? Oh, no. And it was so beautiful just a few seconds ago. Excellent. Just a few seconds ago, I gave away dozens of carnations free to Mrs. Shiver. I didn't mean it. You have perhaps an explanation. No, but if you give me a minute, I'll think of one. I can see it all now. We are in the poor house. That big sign in the sky, it is reading, Seymour Krellboind, rest in peace, in Arabic. Oh, you've got to give him another chance. You promised me a week, Mr. Mushnick. I'll sit up all night with that plant. It'll be healthy in the morning, you'll see. I promise, I promise. He raises his bandaged hands beseechingly to Audrey Jr. As the sun sets, Seymour studies a thick book. Eat me. Blinking, he looks around the empty shop, then shrugs. Feed me. He peeks under the table. Feed me. He falls back in his chair, then scrambles to his feet, staring at the wide open pod. Who said that? You said that. You said that. Mmm, feed me. The pod opens and closes hungrily. You said that. You can talk. I got a talking plant. Say it again. Feed me. Oh, boy. I never been to college and I ain't been around much. But I'd have been willing to bet there ain't no such thing as a talking plant. But I'll take your word for it. Gee, Junior, I'd, I'd like to feed you. But I used up all my fingers. Seymour looks at it imploringly. Look at me, I'm all cut to pieces. But maybe I can find another drop here someplace. He peels off bandages and squeezes his bloody fingers over Audrey Jr. That's the best I can do. Mar, mar. But I'm already anemic. Feed me mar. Gee, Junior, I'd be happy to give you anything I got. But I gotta keep a little blood for myself or I'll be in worse shape than Mom. Mm. I'm sorry, Junior. Oh, I'll go for a walk. Maybe I'll think of something. Seymour flicks off the lights and leaves. On the street, shabbily dressed men roll dice. A drunk man weaves, bumping Seymour. Others stare into shop windows and sit in doorways. In a shadowy rail yard, Seymour walks along the tracks. He tosses stones despondently. He slumps against a crate. He spies a liquor bottle on a nearby wagon. He throws a piece of gravel at it and misses. Twice. Frustrated, he hefts a large rock. As he hurls it, a man sits up behind the wagon, reaching for the booze. The rock strikes him. He collapses. Seymour runs over, aghast. The man thrashes clumsily on the ground. Flustered, Seymour rushes to grab a bucket of water. Seymour trips, sprawling onto the dirt. The other man staggers to his feet, reeling drunkenly. A train approaches. Seymour panics, frozen, as the man falls onto the tracks. The man looks up blearily on his hands and knees. Seymour's eyes grow wide. He writhes helplessly as the train streams by. Seymour covers his mouth, looking around. Snatching a burlap sack from a cart, he heads for the tracks. Soon, Seymour creeps along a dark alley, carrying the now full, dripping sack. He opens a trash bin and lifts the sack up. A shadowy figure approaches. Seymour scurries away. He slinks down the stairs behind a building to an incinerator. He pries open the lid. A light comes on overhead. Daddy! Somebody out there! Seymour sprints away. Outside a grand funeral parlor, he spots a hearse. He flings open the doors, then jumps back. He finds it already occupied by a covered body. Seymour flees. Seymour hauls the sack up the back steps of Mushnick's store and lets himself in. Fighting tears, he trudges into the shop. 
He drops the sack and slumps onto a table. Feed me. He flinches, eyeing the plant. Feed me. Look, chow hound. Don't bother me. I got problems of my own. Feed me. I'm sorry, pal. I'm fresh out of blood. Talk to somebody else. <laughs> I'm hungry. I don't care what you are. Can't you see I'm knocked out? I just killed a man. I'm a murderer. You think it's fun to be a murderer? You think it's fun to haul around a sack full of... Food. Oh, no, Junior. What kind of guy do you think I am? <laughs> I'm starved. Well, maybe just a snack. <laughs> Cringing, Seymour reaches into the sack. He gingerly pulls out a severed hand. Mm, that looks great. He squeamishly squeezes blood into Audrey Jr.'s gaping pod. The plant gobbles up a falling chunk of flesh. <laughs> At a cafe, Mushnik dines with Audrey. Now that is what I call a salad. What do you call that salad? Cesarean. Well, before the next course, I think I'll have a nice cigar. All right? You would like maybe a cigar? <laughs> You don't smoke cigars. What am I thinking about? Where are the matches? He pats his pockets. Oh, oh, you know what I found? I'm looking for the matches, and I found I left the money in the other suit. A waitress enters. Here's your mock chicken leg. You don't have any money? Mushnik splutters. The waitress smiles bitterly at him. So what else is new? All right, all right. I made a mistake. After all, a man is entitled. Go on, this is your story. I'll wait for the punch. Don't get smart with me, girlie. I'll have you know that in my shop in the cash register, I'm having the total day's receipts, which is summing up to more than $9. You'll bring the rest of the food, then I'll go to the shop and get the money. You're playing my favorite song. Now look here, Buster. One of you is going to go down right now and get the loot while the other one stays here until the first one gets back, if you get what I mean. Oh, fine. In this fancy schmancy restaurant, you are holding hostages, right? All right. Excellent. You eat up, Audrey. I'll be back in a flash with the cash. Bye, Gravis. Glaring at the waitress, Mushnik exits. Arriving at the back of the shop, he spies the open door. He tiptoes up the steps and peeks inside. In the shop, Seymour feeds the plant a foot. Mushnik gawks. He blinks, stupefied. Mushnik squeezes his eyes shut and shakes his head, trying to clear it. He backs out of the door, reeling. He staggers down the steps, holding his head. At the cafe, Mushnik sinks into his seat. You flush now, right? Bring me whiskey, rum, wine, gin, bourbon. What? Scotch, rye, tequila, sake, manischewitz. Did you bring the money? Don't bug me with the money. I got to get drunk now. What flipped him? I don't know. Look. Here, take it. Bring me anything. Bring me everything. Creme de mint. Everything you got. Okay. The waitress takes his watch and ring. Travis, what happened? Don't ask. You look like you've seen a ghost. Ghosts I could handle. Don't ask. Why don't you tell me? Maybe I could help you. Help you couldn't. Try and eat something. It'll calm your aggravation. He lifts a fork full of meat, then blanches. In my own shop. Audrey, you wouldn't believe it. You should break out and tell me. All right, I'll tell you tomorrow, right after I am telling the police. The next day. But Mushnik didn't come to the police. If he had, that might have been the finish of the unhappy story. It was not. Mushnik finds a crowd outside his shop. They crane their necks to see inside. Puzzled, he threads his way through them and enters the store. Audrey Jr. towers above the heads of customers. Hi, Travis. $85 with the business already, and we barely opened. Fouch chews a carnation. What did I tell you? You wouldn't be interested in selling a half interest in this place, huh? <laughs> the teens enter. Mr. Mushnick, we talked to the committee, and they said we could use your flower on the float. And guess what? We're going to feature Audrey Jr. Right on top. Boy. Can't you just picture it? I can picture it. 
you. Oh, won't the people just eat it up? Eat up the people. And we're going to have the big part of it open so she can sit in it. Oh. The queen with her crown and scepter. She'll be so cute. Oh, you can just eat her up. Eat up the girl. Oh, there's Seymour! Oh, Seymour! Oh, 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 I got a tooth. Oh, I got a tooth. Let me go. You come Oh, my God, I got a tooth. I can hide all. Let go of my job. Mushnick drags him by the ear to the back room. Now, Seymour, talk on me. I got a tooth. What do you want to talk about? That plant. Is that a nice subject for to talk? Plant. The plant is great. It's it's four times bigger than it was yesterday. I saw, I saw. How come the plant is now so big? Oh, I don't know. But look at all them people out there. We only been open a half hour. We already done seventy dollars worth of business. Eighty-five. Now look, Seymour. You gave this plant a fancy name, Audrey Jr. But I want to know right now, what do just people call it? Well. It's a cross between a Butterworth and a Venus flytrap. Venus flytrap? And what are the habits of this Venus flytrap? Well, the book says it eats insects. It eats them three times in its life, and then it's full grown. Excellent. And how many times is this one eat? Well, once or twice. You don't remember? Well, this is kind of an unusual type flytrap. That is a possibility. It may never eat again. I don't see how it could get any bigger. Then you think it don't need any more flies. Seymour shrugs. Mushnik watches the sails pour in. Oh, my tooth is just killing me. All right, excellent. You run along to the dentist. I'll take care of things here. Thanks, boss. <gasps> Gravis, we've got to order more flowers, tons of them. Mushnik considers, brows furrowed. I'm making lots of money. Seymour charges down the street. He enters Dr. Farb's waiting room, holding his cheek. He stares nervously at the exam room door. That'll teach you to keep your bill up to date, you deadbeat. The patient tears out of the office, clutching his jaw. Go ahead and run, you sniveling dog. Go ahead and run. I'm glad I heard you. I'm glad. I'm glad. Seymour. Uh Seymour. Got a bad tooth, huh? No, I thought this was the men's room. Seymour, come back here, you bad dog. You get in there. He shoves Seymour into the exam room. So, you are the young man who ruined my gladiolas, huh? Sit down. Come on. Uh Farb hurls him into a chair and drapes him with a cloth. Guess what? My tooth, tooth stopped hurting. Yes, I know. Let's see. Shut up and open up. Uh-huh. Farb grabs a long-handled mirror ah. and examines Seymour's mouth. Ah. Does that hurt? Yeah. Good, you haven't felt anything yet. Uh-huh. It can shoot over here. Seymour, who is the dentist here, you or me? I'll find that tooth. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Look at that stalagmite. But, but don't worry, it's going to be an easy one, Seymour. I won't even use Novocaine. Oh, you broke the mirror in my mouth. Well, don't tell me about it, stupid. Just swallow it. Seymour spits it out. All right. Farb picks up pliers. Uh, Seymour, see, I'll have this one and this one and that one, and I have to have this one, it's Seymour. It's only one, two. Uh, Seymour, who is the dentist here, you or me? Are you practicing dentistry without a license? He wags his finger. All right. Uh -huh. Let's see. Uh, oh, shit. Farb pulls a tooth. Look at that. Will you look at that, Seymour? I didn't know you were an elk. Look. You know, I can't afford an assistant. So I get this ready instant mix. It doesn't last very long, but it tastes good. He licks it mm. and winces. All right, Seymour. Oh, stay away from me. Seymour, uh -huh. you're trying to kill me. A duel, aha. Seymour grabs the drill. Farb brandishes a scalpel. They fence. Seymour oh. lunges at Farb, who drops to the floor, motionless. A grinning man enters the waiting room. Is this Stoddard's office? Uh, just a minute. <clears throat> oh, yes. <laughs> I see it is. He scans a copy of Pain Magazine eagerly. Uh, you, you can come in now. 
In the exam room, Seymour wears a white coat with his own hat and scarf. He blocks the man's view of Farb lying in the dental chair. My name is Wilberforce. Wilberforce what? Just Wilberforce. My first name is Wilbur, my last name is Force. <laughs> I don't have a middle name. Well, you have an appointment, maybe? No, but you were very highly recommended to me by one of your patients, a Mrs. As Shiva, I do a lot of undertaking for her relatives. <laughs> well, as you can see, I have a customer now, and I'm all booked up for the rest of the day, so you'll have to come back tomorrow. Oh, I couldn't do that. I have three or four abscesses, a touch of pyorrhea, nine or ten cavities, I lost my pivot tooth, and I'm in terrible pain. <laughs> well, I, I can't help you today. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I'll, I'll just wait outside. <laughs> Force goes back to the waiting room and leers at the pages of Pain magazine. He reads, The patient came to me with a large hole in his abdomen <laughs> caused by a fire poker used on him by his wife. <laughs> he almost bled to death and gangrene had set in. I didn't give him much of a chance. There were other complications. <laughs> the man had cancer, tuberculosis, leprosy, and a touch of the grip. <laughs> I decided to operate. My, my patient just left. You, you could come in now. Oh, goody. <laughs> I didn't see the other man leave. Well, he went out the back door. You know, most people don't like to go to the dentist, but I rather enjoy it myself, don't you? <laughs> I mean, there's such, there's a real feeling of growth, of... He of stabs his finger with a probe and licks it. Progress when that, that old drill goes in. I mean, I'd almost rather go to the dentist than anywhere, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> now, no Novocaine. It dulls the senses. <laughs> This is gonna hurt you more than it is me. Oh, goody, goody, here it comes. Cringing, Seymour drills. <laughs> Force's body goes rigid with pleasure. <laughs> oh, my God, don't stop now! Well, I made a lot of holes, and now I gotta fill it up with this here silver stuff. Well, aren't you gonna pull any? Well, uh... Oh, go on. Well, it's your mouth. Holding pliers, Seymour braces a foot on the arm of the dental chair. Force opens wide and squirms in anticipation. <laughs> Seymour wrenches at a tooth. <laughs> he falls backwards, taking the tooth with him. Well, Dr. Farr, it's been quite an afternoon. I can truly say I've never enjoyed myself so much. I'll recommend you to all my friends. Thank you. Bye. Bye now. Force turns. Every second tooth in his grin is missing. After dark, Seymour carries the dentist's body into Mushnik's empty shop. Feed me! Oh, take it easy, Dracula. What do you think I'm carrying here, my dirty laundry? Audrey Jr. is enormous, with lush foliage and cabbage-sized flower buds. Ooh, I'm coming! I'm coming already! He carries a ladder over to the plant. should be enough for anybody. Mm. Mm. Seymour hefts the body headfirst into the plant's fleshy, wrinkled pod. Well, goodbye, Dr. Farr. You may have been a crummy dentist, but you were a nice fella. I never meant to kill anybody in my whole life. I've killed two in the last two days. Well, but you asked for it coming after me with that knife and all. Fun voyage, Dr. Farr. You want anything else? <coughs> See you in the morning. Seymour plods out the door. The sun shines down on shops of Skid Row. Beyond it, the tall white office towers of Los Angeles loom. In one, a man arrives at a door marked Sergeant Joe Fink, homicide. Come in. The clean cut officer enters. Hey, Joe. Come on in, Frank. How's the wife, Frank? Not bad, Joe. Glad to hear it. The kids? Lost one yesterday. He grabs a cigarette. How'd that happen? Playing with matches. Well, those are breaks. Yeah, I guess so. Got a strange one here. Railroad people say they lost one of their best detectives the other night. Oh, yeah? Down by the yards. He's watching the refrigerator cars. Refrigerator cars? 
Ice thieves. Oh, yeah? What happened? Don't know. Vanished. Blood on tracks. Clues? None. Anything else? Dennis. Farb. Dead? Missing. Clues? Blood in office. Where? Skid Row. Ideas? None. Check it out? Yeah. Frank holsters his gun. Joe dons his hat, and they leave. Outside the shop, Mushnick mails a letter. Now we are on the case. Officer Frank Stooley and me. My name is Fink. Sergeant Joe Fink. I'm a Fink. Mushnick unlocks the shop and enters. He walks toward the back. He turns around slowly, staring and stammering. Audrey Jr. has almost reached the ceiling. Seymour arrives. Morning, Mr. Mushnick. Oh, boy, look at that. Hi, everybody. Oh, my gosh. Ain't it something? It's, it's monstrositous. Yeah. And to think that you did it. Audrey kisses him. Gee, Audrey, you don't have to kiss me. Don't you like me to kiss you? Yeah, but you don't like to kiss me. Why shouldn't I? Nobody else ever did. Well, I do like to. You do? You really do? You like to kiss me? Sure I do. Would you like to kiss me again? Okay. That plant? She pulls Seymour in for a smooch. Mushnick stares at the plant. Oh, boy, you kiss good, Audrey. Oh, I guess I just have a good kisser. How, how, how did it? Did, did, did. Would you like to go out on a date with me some night? When? Oh, sure I would, Seymour. Anytime. Tonight? Okay. Oh, boy. Uh, about that plant. The teens arrive. We got the list of flowers for the float, for the rose parade. I can't talk to you now, girls. Talk on Audrey. Oh, we got the list for the float. Okay, let's take a look at it. Fouch enters. Hi, right, what's cooking? Look at my plant. My, what a large one. Yeah. Mrs. Shiva totters in. Fouch plucks a flower from Seymour's lapel and salts it. Hello, Mrs. Shiva. What's new? Oh, I got terrible news. My nephew Frankie just lost his little boy. Oh, that's too bad. How did it happen? He was playing with matches. Would you like to buy maybe some flowers? Yeah, about 50 cents worth. Well, I'll get them for you. Look at my plant. Oh, I'm looking. The cops stride in. Joe wears a trench coat and fedora. Frank's in a dark coat and tie. Your name Gravis Mushnick? Look, I'm a Mushnick Gravis. I that's my name. Just want to ask you a few questions. Questions ask me Just about. want to ask you a few questions. I, I didn't do it. Do what? Whatever. Ever see this man? Man, see picture. Or none. Why are you so nervous? You got a guilty conscience? No, why should I? Ever see this man? Man, uh, see the, the, the picture, Dr. Farb. So you know him? And my dentist, uh, he, he, he maybe did something. Disappeared. Blood in his office. The other man, too. Blood in the railroad tracks. And a few spare parts. Oh, the, 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 the Dr. Farb is murdered. Is he? No, who knows? Not me. Frank frowns. What do you think? He doesn't know anything. OK, Mushnick. If you hear anything about these men, call our office. Sure, I'll be glad to cooperate with the police. Hello, I'm sitting. Oh, isn't it terrible what happened to your boy, Frankie? Those are the brakes. Mushnik hustles Seymour to the back. All right, Seymour, now you tell me if that plant is finished all grown up. He's finished all growing up. You wouldn't kid your father. My father came home. Me, idiot! It's a finger of speech. Now, look, I can't stand any more of that plant. It's growing me out of house and home. Well, it ain't gonna grow anymore, I promise. How can you be so sure? It ate three times already. Who, I mean, what did it eat this time? Well, about, about a million Japanese beetles. So don't eat no more. It's full. Grab us. There's a lady from some kind of a commitment outside. I think it's important. Excellent. By the by, I understand you want to take Audrey out on a date tonight. That's very good with me, because I am staying to keep an eye on that Meshugana plant. Where are we going to go tonight, Seymour? Well, I just remembered I don't have any money. Well, that's OK. We could take a walk along the ocean or something. I got a great idea. We can eat dinner at my house. My mom's a great cook. Well, that's swell. Oh, boy, I'll call her later and tell her. Beaming, they return to the shop, where an elegant lady inspects Audrey Jr. 
Oh, that's remarkable. You like? Oh, I neither like nor dislike anything, my goodness. I happen to represent the Society of Silent Flower Observers of Southern California. How about that? Tell me, who created this magnificent bloom? I did, me. Oh, and what might your name be? Seymour Krellboyne with a K. Krellboyne. Krellboyne. Raised it in the coffee can. This? Well, t tell me, Mr. Krellboyne, uh, is this a freak or, or can more be raised from the seed? We should live so long. Well, I don't think there are going to be any more, Miss... Uh... Uh, Fischtwanger. Mrs. Hortense Fischtwanger. Uh, I think this is going to be the only one, Mrs. Fischtwanger. Fischtwanger. Fischtwanger? Uh, it's probably indigestible anyway. Fauschwanger blinks at Fouch. <laughs> at any rate, I have the honor to tell you, Seymour Krellboyne, that you have been selected to receive the annual trophy of the Society of Silent Flower Observers of Southern California. A trophy? Me? Such is justice. Uh, tell me, when do you suppose those large buds will open? Well, according to what the book says about the plants that I crossed, they should open day after tomorrow at sunset. Ah, very well. Then I shall return at that time to present the trophy. Good day. Seymour scurries to get the door for her. She looks back at the plant. Remarkable. Oh, boy, I'm going to get a trophy. Oh, Seymour, I'm so proud of you. Oh, a real trophy for Audrey Jr. We can put it on the floor in the rope parade. Oh, boy. At home, Seymour's mother pours a drink as he arrives with Audrey. Oh. Don't look at me. I I'm a terrible sight. I I'm a complete sea hag. She always says that. Oh, well, it's true. I haven't been feeling very well lately. Audrey, this is my ma, Winifred Krellboing. Ma, this is Audrey Fulquart. She's my girl. Hi, Audrey. Are you hungry? I sure am. I could eat a hearse. Oh, <laughs> well, sit right down, and I'll go get the first course. Seymour fetches a chair, the table set with a candle in the middle. Sit here, Audrey. You want me to take your sweater? He throws it across the room. He dumps items off the coffee table, then pulls it up and sits on it. He whips off his hat and gazes at her adoringly. Winifred enters with drinks. Never mind that. Uh, well, well, now try this. Audrey takes a sip, then clutches her throat. <coughs> it tastes like cough syrup. Dr. Flynn's cough syrup. A toast? To Audrey Jr. No, to Audrey Sr. Winifred misses clinking Audrey's glass and spills on her. Mushnick enters the dark flower shop. He turns on the lights and locks the door. Pulling up a folding chair, he sits near Audrey Jr. He eyes the plant suspiciously. You, you glutton, you. Tonight I keep an eye on you. I don't let nobody get near you. He takes food from a paper bag and eats. At Seymour's, Winifred brings out three bowls. Come the soup. I don't touch it till I get the, the flavoring. <laughs> Gee, Audrey, you sure look good by candlelight. Oh, do I really, Seymour? Yeah. Winifred yeah. sprinkles in powder. She dumps the rest in her bowl. I'll try it. Sure smells different. It's different. Some kind of oil, isn't it? God, liver oil. It's wonderful for the colon. And that's sulfur powder on the top. Seymour digs in. Audrey peers uncertainly at it. At the shop, Mushnick dozes in his chair. Audrey Jr. opens. Mushnick stirs in his sleep. Feed me. I'm hungry. Mushnick falls out of his chair. He gets up, staring at the gaping pod. Open it is. Feed me! Mushnick steps back. I didn't hear it. Feed me! I heard it. I want food! A talking plant we got. I'm hungry! No. Hungry? And other fine kettle and fish. Who would you like to have tonight? You'll 
look fat enough. Mushnik glares, affronted. We not only got a talking plan, we got one that makes with smart cracks. Will you listen to me, you botanical bum? Food you wouldn't get. Not from Gravis Mushnik. I'm starved. Excellent. You would unpopulate the old Skid Row. Well, you can forget about it. You wouldn't get fed from Gravis Mushnik tonight. Good night. You'll get yours. The pot closes over its hairy interior. Mushnik crouches in the corner, pulling his jacket tight. At Seymour's. I kind of like this chow mein. Uh, if it tastes a little bitter, it's because it's made of Chinese herbs and it's flavored with acromyosin, Epsom salts. There ain't another cook in the whole world like my ma. That's what your old man said before the louse ran out on me. You know, if you're gonna be married, you gotta be a good cook. Well, maybe you could teach me. You think they're getting married? Well, he hasn't asked me yet. Who hasn't? Seymour. Seymour's too young to get married. Look here, a boy's gotta go out and play around a little bit. Go out on the make and have a ball. Seymour, I don't want to have a ball. I want to be with Audrey. No, no oh, look, Seymour. Seymour. You promised you wouldn't get married until you bought me an iron lung. You've been breathing for years, Ma. Well, it ain't easy. It ain't easy, son. She slurps noodles reprovingly. He throws down his fork. At the shop, Mushnik eats. He turns to the door, then slips inside the flour cooler. A greasy-haired man enters the shop. He has a long scar across his face. Mushnik watches through glass doors, hiding behind flowers. Somebody here. Black hat, 13th jump, funny, the 13th is stupid superstition. Mushnik's foot slips. The man jumps and falls to the floor. He pulls out a gun. All right, you, come out of there. Don't shoot, mister. I'm old and sick. I wouldn't know he's even a fly. Come out in the light where I can see you. Man, please don't shoot. Please, please. I'm only Gravis Mushnik. You wouldn't want to kill me. Where would you hide the body? Don't worry, I'm not going to shoot you. Not unless you try something. Try something? I never tried anything in my life. I wouldn't try anything now. You want my money? Take it. You want I should go out and steal you some more? That's all right, too. I'll do it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I like your brand of hospitality. He opens the register. You'll excuse it isn't more. I'm only a poor florist. Yeah, yeah. We got about 30 bucks here. Come on, now. Where's the rest of it? I was in here this afternoon. I saw about 30,000 people in here. They must have spent some money. Where is it? There ain't no more money. They came in to look on the plant. It's a big attraction, Audrey Jr. The plant. Don't try to snow me, Jim. 30,000 squares didn't come in here just to look for a plant. I want it. They, 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 I don't got no more money, honest. Believe me. OK, let's try this. One. He two, sticks the gun in Mushnik's three, face. Four. No, I ain't got no more money, honest. All right, try it the other way around. Five, four. Three, two... All right! All right, I'm ready. Okay, big bad, where? In the plant. In the plant. The big plant, Audrey Jr. Inside the big leaf. That's right, inside. How <laughs> do you get it open? Just knock. The robber knocks the pod with his gun. The pod opens. The robber gapes at its hairy insides and prickly stamen. Mushnik swallows uneasily. In there. In there. Inside. In the bottom. I don't see anything. Way inside. Right in the bottom. The robber approaches cautiously. He leans in until his head is between the leaves. Mushnik watches apprehensively. The pod snaps shut. The gun goes off. Mushnik's hands fly up to his face. Boy, what I did. The plant burps out the gun. The next day. I don't care what you got at the date with Audrey tonight. I am no more sitting up with that no good Nick plant. But gee, Mr. Mushnik, you don't have to sit up with it anymore. It's all grown up now. Excellent, smart guy. How do you know it don't be hungry no more? Well, because... Tonight you are staying. Then tomorrow they're coming and they're going to give you a trophy, and then after that we are getting rid once and for all for that plan. 
getting rid of it. Why? Don't ask why. Why? The end. Into the garbage can. Aloha. Oi. Yes, Mrs. Shiva. Oh, Seymour, you wonderful plant. Oh, that's all right, Audrey. I'll grow other plants, even more wonderful ones. I know you will. Did you figure out what we're doing tonight? Yeah, we're going to a place full of beautiful flowers. We have to stay here. Yeah. Well, never mind. We'll have a picnic. It'll be just like going to the country. Oh, Did you boy. Get the 3,000 pink azalea for the arbor and the 9,000 yellow mums for the. For Seymour the caresses his plant's the leaves. For the front for and the back. The at home, his mom wears a blood pressure cuff. What do you mean you're going to a picnic at night with that full cord girl? Don't you like Audrey, Ma? She's out after your money. I don't have any money. Oh, she's a smart one. She'll latch on to you until you get some, and then goodbye, fortune. But Audrey's an honest girl, Ma. Yeah, never trust a woman who's too healthy. But Audrey had a bad cold a couple of weeks ago. Oh, a cold, a puny cold. Why don't you get yourself a real female with something decent like Manana Eucleosis or, or gallstones? Well, maybe she could catch something like that. The only thing she'll catch is you. And she'll take you off to some shady sanitarium and leave me to chiropractors and faith healers. I know when I'm not wanted. Oh. She kicks him. Oh, gee, Ma. Don't feel sorry for me. I'll just find a nice wet alley somewhere and curl up and wait for the end. Oh, please don't die till I get back, will you, Ma? I'll take care of you. I'll always take care of you. I promise. Yeah. Bye. She tests her knee reflexes. As the sun sets, Seymour and Audrey are at the shop. Gee, Audrey, I never tasted food like this before. It's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Peanut butter and jelly, what does that cure? Nothing, it's just a food. Well, what good is it if it doesn't clear up pimples or shrink your sinus tissues or something? You're just being silly, Seymour. Seymour, what do you want to be? Well, I want to grow things. If I had a lot of money, I'd go to the South Seas where they grow the most fabulous plants in the world. Well, that sounds exciting. Yeah. I'd like to go to the South Seas, too. There's no reason why you couldn't go. Would you take me with you, Seymour? Oh, I couldn't very well go without you, Audrey. Why not? Well, because, because I'm in love with you, Audrey. Oh, I'm in love with you, too, Seymour. They go to kiss. Feed me. What'd you say? I, I was just kidding. They lean in. I'm hungry. Seymour. I didn't mean it. Why did you say it? Oh, food. You didn't even say that. Oh, yes, I did. I said it. I said it. Oh, I'm looking right at you. Uh, well, I'm a ventriloquist. You're what? A ventriloquist. Feed me. He mouths the words. Seymour, do you feel all right? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, then stop all this nonsense and kiss me. They try again. I'm dying from hunger. All right, if you're so hungry, eat something, but... Forget about me. Gee, I'm sorry, Audrey. Give me to eat. If you can't control yourself, I'm going home. I need some chow. Oh. Uh, an empty stomach. Audrey storms out. Audrey, please wait. Listen to me. I've listened to all the nonsense I want to hear, Seymour. You're a nut. You tell me that you love me, and then you act like a complete idiot. Please listen, Audrey. I'll be able to explain everything soon. Why can't you explain now? Because so many things are so important. I want to marry you, but I got to take care of Mom. Well, that plant in there is going to make it all come true. Tomorrow they're going to give me a trophy and I'll be famous. I'll be a big botanist. And then we can go to the South Seas, just like we planned and but all. But that doesn't have anything to do with what went on in there. When you're ready to come to your senses, Seymour, then I'll talk to you. Good night, Seymour. Eyes glistening, Seymour watches her go. He stomps back inside. Audrey Jr. opens. I'm getting pretty tired of you. I need food. I don't care what you need. Look what you've done to me. You not only made a butcher out of me, but you drove my girl away. Shut up and bring on the food. Don't tell me to shut up. You shut up. Who raised you from a bunch of little seeds? Who fed you all them high-class fertilizers and sat up all night with you when you were sick? Nobody else would have done that for you. Do you think anybody else would have brought you human beings to eat? You're darn right they wouldn't. Well, I've helped you, and you've helped me. Now shut your trap and go to sleep. I'm tired. Crowboy! Turn around. 
Seymour complies. Close your eyes. You are asleep. Open your eyes. He blinks, dazed. Now you will do as I say. Do you follow me? Yes, master. You will go out and find me some food. Yes, master. Now be gone and waste no time. Swaying on his feet, Seymour leaves the shop. The dark street is filled with shabbily dressed men. Seymour walks woodenly, his eyes glazed. He trips and flails, but catches himself. On the road, a car swerves around him. Idiot! At a corner, a woman in a slinky dress spots him. She bends over a water fountain provocatively and tosses her hanky at him. He putters on past. She glares, hands on hips. She tries again, leaning against a lamppost. He walks by. She stamps her feet, incensed. He moves on. Up ahead, the woman waits, posing against a traffic light. She smirks as he stops. She peels a banana. The light changes. She tosses her peel under Seymour's feet. He slips and falls backward. She kneels over him. My name is Leonora Clyde. How's the rain on the rhubarb? Master is hungry. He crawls away. His head bangs a trash can. He gets to his feet and she's there in front of him. Well, hello there. He does an about face, tripping over the can and bumping into a traffic signal. His eyes open and close in sync with the flashing light. He shakes it off and moves on, climbing right over a park bench. Scaling a second one, he stops and looks around. He sits, scratching his head. I gotta find food for Master. Food I gotta find for Master. The woman appears from below the bench. For Master, I gotta find food. Maybe I can help. Who are you? My name is Leonora Clyde. I love you. She kisses the tip of his nose. Master wants food. Let the old goat wait. The night is young, and so are we. Master doesn't eat goat. She slinks over to sit beside him. Well, what kind of food does he like? Seymour prods the woman's bare shoulder. Ooh! <laughs> That's more like it. Kiss me. He pinches her cheek, assessing it. What's the matter? Don't you like me? Too bony. Too bony? Nobody ever told me that before. Beef is better than veal. Ah, uh, you're such a dodo. What do you call this? Chopped liver? She poses seductively. <laughs> he pokes her hips. Master would like more fat. Speak for yourself, John. My name is Seymour. My name is Seymour. That's my name, too. Uh, are you interested or are you just wasting my time? I never thought anybody would volunteer. Do you volunteer? Sure, I do. All right, if you're sure you want to volunteer. All right, my place or yours? I don't care. Well, flip a coin. I don't have a coin. Flip anything, silly. Well, there's a rock. He picks up the large rock and spits on one side. Wet or dry? Wet. He tosses it high in the air. It falls, hitting her. She collapses. Seymour gapes, clutching the sides of his head. Soon, Seymour carries her limp body up the shop's back steps and lets himself in. The next day, the cops drive to Skid Row. The search was narrowing, and we knew that soon we would have the killer. Not that we had any more clues than before, but we had to tell the chief something. I had that feeling in my bones that the mystery was drawing to its climax, and I was determined to be on hand. They join a crowd by the shop. All right, out, out, out. Nobody is in. Today we have a special occasion for Seymour Crowboyne, which has invented the big plan. So I want everybody to please stay out of the way. We want Seymour! We want Seymour! We want Seymour! The teens mob Seymour as he enters. Winifred wears an evening gown and feathered headdress. 
I tell you, this business is worse than being a conductor in a revoluting door. I'll be glad when this day is finished. It's a celebration. They're presenting my son with a trophy. Yeah, what'd he do, run away from home? Please don't look at me that way, Audrey. I want to talk to you. I'm sorry, Seymour. I just don't understand you. I'll explain everything after the ceremony. You, police, what are you doing here? Heard there was something going on here this evening. Just thought we'd come by and keep an eye on things. Look, we don't need no eyes kept on nothing. Everything in the Society of Silent Flower Observers has arrived and sunset is almost upon us. Welcome, lady and gentlemen. We are honored for to have you. Still working on those disappearances. We think they were murdered. Hey, look here, young man. That's no way to talk at a time like this. Let me see your tongue. Frank sticks it out. Uh-huh. Now, what you got? Just the facts, ma'am. Trench mouth. Uh -huh. I know, I had it back in 09. Better have that looked into, Frank. Whatever you say, Joe. Uh, Mr. Crowboy, uh, the sun is going down now, and uh, you do think those buds are going to open. I hope so. Because if they don't, Mr. Crowboy, we shall just have to present the award at another time. Oh, it's starting to open! The pod separates. Mark! A face, frozen mid-scream, stares from inside. Isn't that the railroad cop? Look at the rest. Petals open to reveal the dentist's face. Then the robbers. Audrey shakes her head in disbelief. Winifred gasps. The final blossom bears the slinky woman's face. Ah! Fauschwanger faints. What do you think, Frank? They're all there, Joe. Yes, you're right. Mr. Crowboy, how do you explain this? I didn't mean that. He flees. That's right, officer. He didn't mean to kill them. Seymour, you promised you'd explain. Winifred faints. Looks like they're getting away, Joe. Yes, you're right. Let's catch him. Right. They rush out, followed by Mushnik. The teens stare at the new blossoms, grinning. Oh, now the float will be perfect. Yeah. Seymour pelts down the street with the cops and Mushnik in hot pursuit. He hurdles into an alley. They chase him, close behind. He pops back out and goes down a subway entrance. The cops skid around the corner after him. Mushnik brings up the rear, arms flailing. Seymour runs back up the stairs, followed by the others. A gang of scruffy kids chase after them. Seymour scales a mound of excavated dirt outside a funeral home. The three men scramble up after him. The kids race on down the street. Seymour pauses to catch his breath, leaning on a chain link fence with a no trespassing sign. He pushes open the gate and runs into the shadowy lot of a tire company. He disappears behind the building. The three pursuers run through mud and into the lot. Their shadows flit over the dimly lit building. Seymour races through the back lot full of thousands of used tires. He runs carefully atop a row of tires stacked side by side. The three men reach the stack. Frank fires his gun. They step clumsily along the tire wall, arms out to their sides for balance. Seymour crouches low and passes at their feet, going the opposite way. He scrambles up top and flounders further into the lot. The cops reappear, spotting him. Frank fires. Behind him, Mushnik clutches his chest, out of breath. He slumps down wearily into a tire. The cops clamber up the tires and run after Seymour. Seymour climbs a jumble of massive tractor tires. He slips and struggles to regain his footing. The cops close in on him. They lurch from tire to tire. Frank fires. Seymour approaches and Mushnik sticks out his leg. To his astonishment, Seymour doesn't trip, but Frank and Joe do. Helping them to their feet, Mushnik rejoins the pursuit. Ready to drop, Seymour careens around the side of the building. His pursuers follow, finding themselves in a junkyard full of disused sinks, tubs, and toilets.
they prowl around, scanning for movement. Stymied, Frank scratches his chin with the barrel of his gun. Mushnik claps a hand on Frank's shoulder. You wouldn't find him here with the toilets. Let's go back. Frank turns to Joe, who nods. Throwing up his hands, Mushnik follows them out. Behind them, a toilet seat sitting on a barrel rises. Seymour's head peeks out. Exhausted, Seymour returns to the shop. He dusts off his hat, abandoned on the floor. You dirty rat plant, you messed up my whole life! Feed me! I'll feed you. He grabs a knife. I'll feed you like you've never been fed before. He climbs up to the open pod and steps inside. Later, Audrey leads a drooping Winifred inside the shop. Audrey helps her sit. They watch as Audrey Jr.'s pod opens. Mushnik staggers back to the shop, followed by the cops. Better to give up, gentlemen. You wouldn't find him tonight. Look, the door's open, Frank. Oh. They go inside, where Audrey and Winifred gaze up at the massive plant. He was such a good boy. A final blossom opens, revealing Seymour's terrified face. Seymour! I didn't mean it. The blossom wilts, and Seymour's frozen face flops over. The end. <laughs>